The Mummification Process by Emmy Elter, Sequire Rowland, and Vanessa Cusburn. Vanessa, do you? So the first one is the mummification process, and then the subtopics are afterlife and religion, medical skills, and tombs. Hello, you died. It was very horrific. We're going to spare you the gory details, but today we are going to show you the process of the afterlife and your eternal home. So first up, we're going to show you our tomb, then the tools that were used on you. Then we're going to show you the mummification process. Then you can meet the gods and fi see final resting places much like your own and see other tools. Emmy will be going around with her model of... Oh. <laughs> Their final... <laughs> oh, my bad. Somebody, yeah, grab it. So this is your tomb. These are the mourners, and the jewels are represent your riches. And there's your tomb. It's open so you can see the head. Thanks to me here as I designed it myself. The capnotic jars are represented by the beads. You can have clay on hand. And the pyramid is represented with an open thing so you can see the hole inside. Show it to the camera. No way. Then we have pictures of gods up there with the, your animal friend mummified. He was killed. When Vanessa, they were come show it to the camera. Awesome. And then you have your three family members um, sadly mourning your death. So here is your medical school skills. I will be. So mummification changed and played a huge part in medical skills. And here's why, because it gave them a deeper understanding of atomical knowledge. Come on over, can't see you. There you go. The knowledge of the organs in the body because you're gonna have to go into the body and remove the organs and stuff. And so they learned a bunch about that. The process of mummification led to the ancient Egypt Egyptians having an understanding of autonomy. Um, for mummification, they were aware of the internal organs, though not, um, though not of the functions of them. This allowed doctors to record findings and develop methods of surgery based on Knowledge. Okay, so like Emmy said, you have passed away, sadly, but lucky for you, you still have a long way to go. So to all the priests out in the audience that are embalming today, you're going to need some canopic jars, linen straps, and a lot of them. A sarcophagus, nature on salt, resin, sawdust, plaster, onions, fake hair, torture mask, a scarab, beetle amulet, animal jars, food, water, clothes, etc. So let's get into step one, removing the internal organs. The lungs, liver, and stomach and intestines to show the camera. dried and preserved in resin, then wrapped in linen, and then stored in canopic jars. The liver will be stored in a jar with the human head of the god Imseti. The lungs in the jar with the baboon head of the god Happy. And the stomach in the jar with the, the jackal head of the god Dumuti. And the intestines in a jar with the falcon head of the god Quibesant. <laughs> And you may be asking, what about the brain? It's not in there. 
But you don't need it. Don't even spur a jar on it. But the heart that stays in the body, you'll need it later. And it's the center of thought, reason, memory, emotion, wisdom, and personality, or your entire identity. So here's the important facts. When the stomach is cut, it is sewn up and covered with the carbon of the eye of the sun god Horus. The person who cuts you open will run away because his or her work insults the gods and people will throw stones at them and nobody wants to get stones. So step two, you will cover the body with natron, which is a salt-like chemical, and you'll have to wait a long 40 days of the natron drying after the body. So what is after natron? Natron is removed from the body, the body is rubbed with oils for soft skin, and the place of organs are replaced with sawdust, rags, and chef. Then you'll experience 15 days of ravage, 20 layers of linen and bandages. Bandages are stiffened with plaster to create a case for the mummy. Step three, decorations. Now it's time for decorations of the mummy. You will need some fake eyes or onions and some, hate, and some fake hair must be added to the mummy. Portrait masks must look like yourself and may be made by painters. Step four, coffins. Of course you can't just leave a linen wrapped body like that, you need a coffin. But what are coffins used for? Coffins are where the body is gonna be placed. The wealthy, if you're extreme, three coffins are gonna be stuffed inside one another. And pictures of gods and spells to protect the deceased. Coffins placed inside huge sarcophagus or a huge stone coffin. And step five, funeral. You need a funeral like modern dimes, and what to expect are mourners, most likely women, sobbing and wailing loudly while wearing blue dresses that are the symbol of mourning and throwing dirt and ashes on themselves. Your coffin will be pulled by boat to your tomb. Priest does gestures so your senses are restored. An important note, Mourners are hired professionals. I'll let you guys write that in your notes real quick. Raise your hand if you like cats. How about ducks? Well, you'll be really interested in this topic then. Animal mummies. And animals were involved to be sent to the afterlife, but there were many differences based on why they were being involved. Important note, animals were harmed in the making of this. So if you are sensitive, don't listen to this. Uh, so different kinds of reason, food, you always need something to eat in the afterlife, of course. Pets, what would the afterlife be without your best friend? Cult animals, they have special powers. And involved animals, the gods need it so they will be pleased, of course. Pizza last, you think that you can finally rest for eternity in your cozy sarcophagus. Think again. Sadly, your tomb will be disturbed by all sorts of things. Like nosy tourists. People come to use it and use mommy supplies for their own needs. They were obsessed with the scrap beetle, which will you, you will hear about later in the afterlife and religion section. So paint was made from ground up mommy remains. Paper was caused by the outbreak of cholera caused by using brown paper or linen to wrap meat and fertilizer. Cats were used as frills. Firewood, arms and legs were used as torches. And tomb robbers, linen was very valuable because how much time it took 
Glass was scarce because it could be made into new objects, and jewels of gold could be melted and reused, and frankincense and mirth were used were valuable for their fragments and gold. So how was mummification process important? The mummification process was important because it helped honor the dead in their own way while also using materials to help the process. The time and effort going into mummification was unreal. It helped make medical history as well as it also reflected their religion. Important note, in the Old Kingdom, mummification was not meant for everyone. Nobility or rich people were the only ones who could afford it. Later, shortcuts were devised so all Egyptians could be mummified. The whole step took 70 days. I'll let you guys write that in your notes real quick. 70. 70 days, yeah. religion is an important part of the mummification process. It shows their culture through paintings and art. Meet the king in the underworld and his advisor. The king is stronger than the god, which is Anubis, the god and the judge of the dead. He judged you. You're lucky you're able to be here and not being, we'll talk about that later. Osiris, the god, king of the underworld, he is the major ruler. He makes all the decisions for this world. Wife to the king, but she's so learned in that. So this is Isis, goddess of magic and wisdom, and she's the queen of the underworld. Now for a while she wasn't here because she ran away because her husband got murdered by his brother, but we'll talk about that later. And this is their son Horus. Drama in the family of God. This is Horus, he is the god of the sun. And this is Seth or Set, depending on who you ask. God of de desert storms and foreigners and basically all weather disasters. Now, Seth got really jealous of his brother because he had an important role. So he decided to murder his brother and take the throne for himself. Now, Isis <coughs> got pregnant with Horus right before that, so she had to flee and run. While learning, she perfected learning how to revive people and, and, and and when Horus turned an age where it was acceptable to fight back, he fought back and saved his father, saved his father, saved his father in a little war, in like a little battle, and he came out on top. Now Seth is here because they kept him around. They like keep him in chains. Now this is Amit, the devourer of the dead. If you fail the judging, he ate your heart. Now the important part of Amit is that he connects with the judging because if your heart was super heavy, you would fail. You're just, you would just be gone. If your heart was super light, you pass. Thankfully, you guys had a mediocre heart, so they just like booted you for it. Um, Vanessa. And rituals were very important to Egyptians. They had rituals to let people walk, move, walk, and eat in the afterlife. Write that down, that's important. Now these rituals were, Vanessa, please stop moving this. Now these rituals had an important act. These were important for the mummification process. So if they messed up your mummification process, well, you wouldn't even be here. You'd be dead, like dead dead. No afterlife, no bad place, just <coughs> party in the afterlife, anyone? Now, after you're mummified, you have a big, there's a big part of your tomb, which Sinclair, Vanessa will talk about more. They, Old Kingdom, and Old Kingdom, Old Kingdom people only had special tombs. So thankfully you're from the New Kingdom and you're more modern, and that's my present part of the presentation. Go, go, stay with 
And what does the afterlife look like? It looks like bright and colorful, lots of food, and peaceful. Basically, your epilogue of perfection. Because remember, Egyptians didn't have a lot of that. So they wanted it to be perfect. Asian Egyptians have come a long way using medical skills. Toothless. Dentists called toothless or tooth workers were important in the um, ancient Egypt. They helped a lot of people fix teeth by applying medicines to the teeth. They wrapped gold wire around loose teeth to prevent, to prevent them from falling out. Medicines. Ancient Egypt used herbs and drugs to treat all types of different illnesses. Without them, mo uh, most people would die at a young age. Um, they also used plants and bandages to heal scratches or cuts. Um, Egyptian tombs. Tombs were a part of the mummification. Uh, tombs were an important part of the mummification process. What were tombs made of? The Egyptian tombs were made of stone and covered uh, the area of several city blocks. Tomb facts. Large tombs signify the importance of the dead. Number two, people, placed in, people were placed in tombs to be protected from wild animals, robbers, and bad weather. Egyptian, uh, uh, Egyptians honored pharaohs in a unique way, and they built great tombs for them. Tour. Thank you so much for being dead. I mean, it's not good that you're dead, but you mean like you're here. We hope you've enjoyed your trip. Just to recap, you've seen your tomb. You saw the process you mummified. You saw the tools. You saw. The, you met the gods and hopefully made friends with some of them because you need that. And looked at the medical skills and saw your tomb and other tombs. Good luck in the afterlife. You're going to need it. Also, make sure you have that it's a 70-page process in your notes. You will be lost without them.